Hey, you're back. Hello again. I'm Paul Dvorak, editor of Wind Power Engineering and Development Magazine. In an earlier video, we touched briefly upon the equipment in a wind turbine's driveline. Uh, today, let's talk about the gearbox and how it works, what it does, uh, what goes on inside. And first of all, why does a wind turbine need a gearbox? Well, if you've watched a wind turbine at work, you might see that the rotor is turning only about 10 to 18 RPM. That's not too fast. The generator, one called an induction generator, needs about 900 to 1,000 RPM to produce the turbine's rate of power. So the gearbox function is to turn the slow turning, high torque of the uh, rotor into a much higher rotational speed for the generator. Now just a word on torque. It's a measure of twist in the shaft. In English units, it's measured in foot pounds and in metric units in newton meters. Now the sketch of the wrench on the bolt, either hand and one at a time, will generate 20 foot pounds to the bolt. So the wind turbine gearbox is a speed increaser, just the opposite of what most industrial gearboxes, which are just speed reducers. Now the wind turbine gearbox usually has three steps or stages. The first stage of a gearbox uses a planetary arrangement or design because it sort of looks like a, a celestial planetary system and because it's capable of handling high incoming torque. Now the turbine rotor turns the planet carrier that holds three to five planet gears, which in turn spins the sun or center gear. The outer ring gear is stationary. The arrangement increases the rotor's rotational speed about four to one, so 15 RPM input speed generates uh, 60 RPM on the output. Uh, this also reduces the torque by about one-fourth. The second and third stages use helical gears in simpler arrangements. A big gear turns a smaller gear in ratios, again, of about four to one. Now, each stage increases the speed and reduces the torque. So the incoming 60 RPM is increased to about 240 RPM, and then again to about 920 RPM at the gearbox output shaft, which turns the generator. Now, as you'd expect, there are variations. For example, the picture of the planetary section shows three planetary gears, but more recent gearbox designs use five planet gears to spread the incoming load around. Also, some gearboxes on, on uh, larger wind turbines, say over three megawatts, use two planetary sections to handle the enormous incoming torque. And then the final stage is the helical gears. Uh, because some of the gearboxes have uh, needed uh, lots of attention and repair work, a few turbine designers are working to get rid of the gearbox altogether by using permanent magnet or PM generators instead of the induction generator. But the PM generator must be much larger in diameter than the induction generator, some about six meters in diameter, that's about 18 feet, to produce enough linear speed for the generator to properly perform. That will lead to a huge nacelle. So one way to reduce the size of the generator is use gearbox again to turn the permanent magnets. In these cases, the gearbox needs to have only two sections or stages for a final drive ratio of about 16 to 1. So 15 RPM input on the rotor is turned into about uh, 240 RPM. In this arrangement, a small gearbox with a small diameter permanent magnet generator would only be, need about uh, 2 meters in diameter. Another plus, this arrangement produces the lightest weight drive frame for any given size. In closing, I want to thank uh, Gearbox Express and Romax Technology for the images in this video. Well, that's all for now. For more wind power videos, dial over to uh, windpowerengineering.com.